Katie Hopkins. Oh my even goodness, everybody. Isn't this just the best? Is it, does it turn out that conservatives are actually much, much funnier than the other side? Yeah. Hell yes. We have the best sense of humor. It's why Democrats are generally so ugly, right? <laughs> they just don't smile enough. Um, my name's Katie Hopkins. I come from the generation of women that still like to make an effort so we look relatively hot for the men that we want to please. I just came from Denver. It's evident there that the trend is much more for women to look as bloody ugly as they can. Unless you look like a fat lesbian, really you don't fit into Denver anymore and they really have set the bar high for ugliness there. Ugly, ugly women. Um, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to Karen. A round of applause, please, for Karen, who made this happen. And also um, to my darling husband, uh, Brandon Strack. I once went to an award ceremony with Brandon and had to re-inform the audience that the awards were handed out wrong because actually the award was for Brandon Strack's eyebrows. It's unbelievable to me that the FBI have gone after someone with this kind of eyebrows that chooses to wear gold lame for a living and a sequin jacket. It's not a probable person to take over the Capitol building. Brandon Strack really has gone through it recently. He was held in prison, detained, because he tried to fight for Donald J. Trump and all the 85 million plus Americans who voted for him. He's been crushed. He's been squashed. He's been entirely removed from the public eye and he's still here, he's looking better than ever, and he's worked out hard. So uh, he really is a hero of our time, truly. I was just asking him about his time in prison. He spent two days in a cell, this boy, because of his fight for Donald J. Trump. And not many people rallied to his side. Not many people stood with him, but I know you all will. And I do. Thank you. Brandon, you're loved. There you go, proof positive, I paid her earlier. <laughs> now, Brandon got hauled, in, hauled his ass into prison. He had to share a cell with a four-time offender. I asked if he was hot, he said yes. <laughs> he was also straight. <laughs> I should have been locked up with that guy, I'm pissed off. Brandon was made to wear brown underwear, just rubbing this area because it makes me feel better, and an orange jumpsuit. And before he was put in his prison cell, he was weighed. But because of the pandemic, he was really pissed off because he weighed 192 pounds. <laughs> Brandon is not that pissed off about the fact that he was locked up for supporting Donald J. Trump. He's more pissed off about the fact that he was 192 pounds when it was recorded. <laughs> so he has worked hard in the interim to shapen up. And now, son, you are looking good. Yes, beautiful. Where's Josh? Where are you, ginger? You ginger animal? There you are. So, uh, he, he, boys are quite funny, aren't they, actually? I know. I've always wanted to have a penis for a day. Because boys do this thing, which we'll get Josh to demonstrate later, if we can see it under all of that stuff. But boys do this thing called helicopter willy. Hands up if you've ever done a helicopter willy, boys. Don't you freaking well lie to me, you bastards. You know what a helicopter willy is, girls? It's where you don't know. Have you been married? What have you been doing in your bedrooms, girls? It's where, we could get Josh up here right now to demonstrate. Should we do that? Or Brandon, maybe. <laughs> so helicopter Willie, I honestly can't believe you don't know. I'm almost embarrassed. Have you had sex yet? A helicopter Willie is where you do this as a man and your, helicopter, your Willie does a helicopter, a 360. Okay, I'm alone. I don't know why Josh got involved in the helicopter willy thing, but all of you practice at home later. It's very important that we keep this going. It's a very important tradition. So Josh being ginger, obviously ginger is an affliction. He can talk it up all he wants, but it is. In Norway, close to my own home, um, there's a massive sperm bank. It's the largest sperm bank on the planet. They no longer accept ginger sperm because no one wants it. 
Masks, is it not a joy to see each other laughing and feeling better? Is it not brilliant? Watching these ladies, you, what's your name? But Did you say Barbara? Okay, watching Barbara tonight has been everything for me. Just watching a lady laugh and laugh until she wets herself, but she didn't really. I mean, what a joy, right? What a joy to see each other's faces, to hear each other's laughter, and to feel better together. That's what they took from us. We think it's about masks. It was never about masks. It was about taking away the joy of humanity, of being in the same place, of laughing together, of feeling better, and of feeling lifted up. And Barbara, you've done that for me all night. When the boys are up here, anyone else, all I'm doing is looking at you because you're just on the floor laughing. And that's, that is the best thing about this whole evening for me, is just watching other people laugh. And are people literally psychotic at the moment in Beverly Hills? Yes. Beverly Hills, I've never seen anything like it. I have to teach a few people a lesson just in Starbucks the other day. I walked in, everyone's standing angrily on their circle of doom. <laughs> circle of doom, two masks on, angry in Starbucks because the people in Starbucks aren't going fast enough. People are having to cancel their order. People are getting stroppy. People are trying to pretend they're not in the same building as anyone else because you, we're going to die of Ebola any minute. Just being assholes. And I walked in, I had, I've been in Colorado where people are kind of nice because they weren't, you know, in school that long. And, um, <laughs> I'm like, shh, these people are assholes here in Beverly Hills. I can work it out, right? They've got a lot of money, they've paid to be exclusive, they've lived a life of privilege, they've got walls around their homes, they've never had to be amongst people. What's the one thing the pandemic doesn't give a shit about? walls and exclusivity and suddenly they can't protect themselves and they don't freaking like it do they and i love the pandemic for that bring on the covid and teach beverly hills some fucking manners right <laughs> anyway so they're all in starbucks and they're all being assholes so i just thought right so i took off my mask got up to the desk and went i am sorry that you're having to deal with so many assholes in here today and it went quiet as hell in that store and no one else muttered a word and I think that's what we have to do, right? We have to be the gateway to cut some kind of reasonable. I don't give a shit how you want to live your life. I don't care if you want to turn up tonight in a hazmat suit. I'm delighted if you want to get a vaccination, you go for broke. But don't tell me what to do with my life or how to live my life. You do you, let me do me. You do you. So I'm at an elevator in Denver. I li I'm in downtown Denver now with all the ugly fat lesbians and the homeless people, which is my kind of space. And uh, we're waiting for the elevator in the hotel. It's one of those hotels you go through the door and they go, have you got your mask? 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 <laughs> hand sanitizer. <laughs> hand sanitizer. Take your hand sanitizer and shove it up your ass. <laughs> so we're all queuing. You're not allowed more than one family group or one person in the elevator, right? So on every floor, there's a damn line of people waiting for an elevator because liberals love to do what they're told because I don't know why. They don't have a hobby or they don't have a sex life. I don't know. <laughs> So day two comes and I'm on the fifth floor, no, seventh floor, seventh floor, and there's a line and ping, the elevator comes, someone's in it, everybody waits because the rule is you're only allowed one person in the elevator, da 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 da. And I'm like, you know what, I have a life to lead and I'm not getting any younger. Like, seriously, if gravity has any more effect on this face, I'm going to be sweeping it off the floor. <laughs> so ping, the elevator opens on the seventh floor and I went, can I get in? Because frankly, I don't give a shit. And there's a guy in there, a tattooed guy, pretty hot, actually. <laughs> Tattoos have come to mean they're a language for us, right? Tattoos tend to mean they're on our team. Mm -hmm. I love that about COVID. It means tattoos have a whole new meaning. I intend to get fuck COVID written up my ass sometime soon. <laughs> so I go, can I get, because I don't give a shit. He goes, well, I don't give a shit either. You get on in here. So in the elevator I go, and there's a couple, another couple at the back, they go, we don't give a shit either. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, downtown Denver. So now we're going down and we get to the fifth floor. Ping! And the lift opens, uh, elevator opens, sorry. And there's a line of people on the fifth floor. And I say to the couple waiting there in front of us with their little child, would you like to get in? Because we don't give a shit. <laughs> yes, we would. We don't give a shit either. And in they came. So now we're going down to the ground floor. I don't know what that's about, because you don't actually do that in an elevator, do you? You just stand there, but we'll just go with this. We get down to the ground floor, and I'm like, 
Should we go back up to the 14th? Because you are literally the best people I've ever met in Denver. And I want to spend some more time with you. You're my kind of people. We get to the ground floor and one of the guys behind me with a tattoo said, right, best angry face, look pissed off at the world. And out we all went. Ta-da! Into the world. And I, that to me is the kind of thing we need to do, right? Politely, respectfully, small acts of defiance. We need to be a doorway for others. That if you want to not give a shit, come join the We Don't Give a Shit team because it's a fun place to be, right? That's what we're going to do. So I am here again. Once again, I am banned from your country because not just because I'm me, but because I have a very special kind of Ebola, a British kind of Ebola. Anybody that's hugged me this evening, you now have it too, and your time on this earth is limited. So make the frickin' most of it. The bar's outside. I'd get drinking if I was you. I'm banned from your country because I have a special kind of Ebola. And I'm also banned from leaving the UK because it is illegal to leave your home in the UK. It's illegal to be more than seven miles from your home address to get groceries. It's illegal to go on holiday. It's illegal to be out and about. We're literally not allowed to do anything. But you know, I feel like the time for asking permission is over. And the time for waiting to be told yes or no is through. So I broke my ass back into your country to remind you why America is still the greatest nation on the planet. And that's exactly why I'm here. First up, I had to get onto a plane to leave the UK, so I went to Germany first and became a transit passenger because no sensible British person wants to go to Germany because they're all a bunch of assholes. <laughs> So I had to have a PCR test, right, a COVID test at the airport in order to be allowed to get on my plane. And so I went in to get my PCR test and the woman's very serious. She's got full gear on, the hazmat suit, the visor, the double mask. You can never be too careful. I'm just trying to fly to freaking America. She says, right, you, you can go into cubicle. I paid her $150. It's not cheap, right, to get these freaking tests done. Yeah, $150. And she goes, you can go into cubicle two. I look across to cubicle two, and there's a woman looking at me all in a jumpsuit. You know, like the, what do you call it here, ER. You know, an ambulance suit, all green, all zipped up, visor, mask. <laughs> so in I go, I get into cubicle two. She goes, shut the door. And I was like, holy shit, I did not know they'd already gone for the anal swabs. <laughs> but you know, a girl can but hope. <laughs> oh, it takes me back to my youth. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> to borrow Brandon for this. Brandon, get up, babe. So, um, don't worry, there's no anal probing involved. Come here. I mean, you know, there could be. You don't have to put your shoes on, darling. Fuck it, you're amongst friends. So she goes, uh, she goes, come here, shut the door. And then she gets me, she gets my head, and she shoves it straight in between my boobs. And she goes, I bloody love you. What a load of shit this is. So, so I made that story up just so I could... got me set for the week, thank you. <laughs> Turns out our socialised healthcare system also knows that this is a load of shit. Like the people in the elevator know this is a load of shit, but she needs to keep a roof over her head and food in her children's stomach. Let's make this clear with all of us here. There is no such thing as a non-essential worker anywhere. Everybody is an essential worker in America, whatever you do. Even if you're a half-rate comic like Adam. Um, <laughs> So now I get to Mexico and I'm spending 20 days in Mexico City to cleanse myself of my British Ebola um, because nobody would go to Mexico City, would they? I'm on a journalist visa, not that my visa lets me in anymore. And Mexico City has killed more journalists than any other place on the planet. So that's where I decide I go because it adds up to a story. Why would you do that? But of course, first up, you have to fly on a plane. Has anybody fl flown on a plane during the time of a pandemic? Hands up. Isn't it just the most charming experience of your life? Didn't you just love it? Did they tell you more rules than you could ever be told on your life? Don't you love being bossed around like you're a piece of meat or an animal on a farm? Don't you just love it? Due to COVID, we can no longer do fuck all for anyone. How 
does that happen? How is that a possibility, right? Due to COVID, we have to have new food and what do they call it here in America? Beverages. What is that word? Who has that? Why do Americans have that? What are you doing? When we go outside here, you have drinks, right? Americans put an American on a plane and they have beverages. I don't understand. There's no way of saying beverages without doing that. Because of COVID, there will be no food and beverages. So. so now you've got some fat cow, air stewardess, who's obviously eaten her way through the freaking pandemic. She's got a polyester on and it's all hanging over. Oh, mask, 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 put your mask on. I'm eating a peanut. Or put your mask on in between chews. Comes that, doesn't it? Like, it, oh, oh, and everything about me wants to rebel, and I don't know how. And, oh, oh. So she's there, and of course, all they want to do is go and sit at the back of the plane on their little stupid seat facing backwards and play their stupid crapping game on their iPhone, don't they? Where they get fruit and scores for their fruit. That's all they do. Because of COVID, I'm just going to be a fat cow and do nothing. I think air stewardesses should have to do 10,000 steps of flight. If you don't do your 10,000 steps, you old fat knacker, you're out of a job. <laughs> they come down the aisle, oh, water and a snack, water and a snack. It's got its like bloody Victorian England, isn't it? Gruel. <laughs> do you want something down, gruel? No, oh, fuck you, gruel. I want a gin and tonic and two chocolate bars. Now piss off. Anyway, Mexico City, me, love Mexicans. I was out running, took a trip because my sneakers weren't all that they should have been. I fell over and this dark gentleman came and picked me up off the ground. He had dark eyes and dark hair. And he said, oh, are you, are you okay? And I was like, yes. He said, would you like to come and get some drugs? <laughs> yes, I fucking would. I bloody love Mexico. It's brilliant. My husband said, were you all right? I said, well, I tried not to be. Um, so now, I now I need a PCR test to get into the United States of America. And so what happens in Mexico, you didn't get the whole rubby boob thing. This time, I go down on the beach to a guy called Alejandro. Alejandro sits on the beach all day getting a tan. And he has this kind of fancy dress outfit that he thinks might look a bit medical. It really doesn't. And he sat there with the equivalent of a freaking Q-tip. You know Q-tips? That's Alejandro on the beach. You give Alejandro 20 pesos, he goes to the back of his little tent, comes back, negative test certificate. Oh, very nice, thank you very much indeed, Alejandro. That's exactly what I paid for. 20, 20 pesos, a negative certificate, and he waves the Q-tip about and throws it in the bin. No test required. That's how I got into the United States of America. What a load of old shit this is. So, um, so I break into America, I get to the desk, and the thing about uh, immigration, you won't really understand this because you all live here and you have a right to be here. I'm an illegal immigrant in your country right now, and I'm kind of pissed off with you all. I was promised as an illegal I'd be given free housing, free healthcare, and a hotel. What have I been given? Piss all. So I'm queuing to get in. Now, when you get to um, immigration, the thing you have to be really careful of, you don't want the person that looks like an angry vegan, like they come from Beverly Hills, right? That's not the person you want, okay? And you don't want the guy that looks like, you know, he probably voted Biden, doesn't really know where he is. You don't want him either. What you want is the guy that looks like he kills or eats people for a living. That's the guy you want. That's the guy I'm going to. So I go to that guy with the tattoos who looks like he just practices guns, you know, in his spare time. And he says, I think I've let you into this country before. And I'm like, yes, 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 you have. And he goes, I think if I look through your passport, I'd find my stamp. And I'm like, I'd be prepared to give you a blowjob right now if you let me into this country, darling, so you look where you want. And then he goes, welcome home. Right, so now I buy the baggage carousel and it's all coming out. We was crying, 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 crying. And this cute little American lady, because you guys are all so sweet, comes over and she goes, Oh, did you lose your suitcase? <laughs> no, I just broke into the greatest land on the history of this planet to see my people, the American people. And it's a complete dream to be here. 
because you know the UK is in such a shit state. I love you Americans. You do the best exports there are. 37 billion in cars that we take from you. 22 billion a year we take from you in steel. We also import a whole other bunch of other stuff from you that you do really well. So my question to you all is why the fuck did you give me Meghan Markle? Seriously? This has not worked out well for us. We're having a hard enough time with lockdown as it is. We don't need this. We just lost Prince Philip. Prince Andrew turns out to be a paedophile, and then you gave us Meghan Markle. Seriously, seriously, guys. She really is a piece of work, isn't she? Prince Harry was so the best of us. I mean, he may have been ginger, and that's obviously an issue. And we were trying to breathe that out, but you know. <laughs> now we have Meghan Markle on our shores. Prince Harry. He used to fly helicopters, he was in army fatigues, he used to turn up in Vegas with a bevy of blonde beauties balanced on his balls. He was just, you know, the best of us. He used to dress as a Nazi at parties. I mean, what's not to love? Just 13 minutes. Now he's about as interesting as my mother-in-law, and you know, she's dead. So, it's been a tragedy on in and I, I really very much hope you're going to take uh, Meghan Markle back from us and keep her over here and only give us back Harry for the funeral. You're all like, no, keep her. But yeah, the UK is in a dark place. You know, people are locked down beyond belief and I know we've all been through it here. And there is a genuine sense in the UK that we don't know where it will end. I absolutely am convinced, as, as night is night and day is day, that within five years, the British people will not be allowed to own a vehicle in the United Kingdom. That grab has already begun. So petrol and diesel cars are already being ruled out within, I think, two or three years. During lockdown, they've dug up our major highways and replaced them only with bike lanes. And already we're restricted to a seven mile radius, which tells you what's gonna come when they make us only use state transport. What I look forward to is the day they try and take Ford pickup trucks away from Americans. Because <laughs> that is not gonna go so well for them now, is it? One thing you don't take away from Americans is their guns. The second thing is their Ford pickup trucks. What I love about Biden's gun nonsense that he's coming out with now is if you piss off at a Republican, what's the first thing that they do? They go out and buy more weapons, right? I was at a breakfast meeting the other day and they were going down the line. They were kind of goofing with me, but they were showing all the weapons that they had. So they go, Steve, Steve, show Katie, how many weapons have you got? And Steve's like, and then he's like, oh, I forgot the taser. Taser? We're trying to have scrambled eggs, Steve. What are you doing? <laughs> and they go down the line, they go, what have you got, you know, Brian? Brian goes, well, I've got this, I've got this, I've got the 12, you know, whatever. I've got the semi-automatic and then the five that I'm gonna hand in if they make us hand some in. They go down to Bob and they go, Bob, what have you got? Bob goes, what do you mean aside from the cannons? <laughs> cannons? I believe that in no time in modern history has there ever been a greater cache of weapons in the country, in this great country, the land of the free, America. And I think that's a very, very reassuring thing. I'm very happy about it. Because of your second amendment, you have your first. In the UK, I'm not allowed to defend myself with anything greater than a bottle of hand sanitizer. And as we already agreed, that's been shoved up some Democrats' arse. So I'm in a difficult place. A couple of jihadis came to my home to chop my head off. Uh, in the UK, no joke, um, for because of my views on Islam and the fact that, you know, I'm not necessarily supportive of the religion of peace. I like to say the religion of peace. I like to say that I have um, three children under the age of 16 and most of my Muslim friends have 16 children under the age of three. I'm kidding, of course, I don't have any Muslim friends. <laughs> A couple of jihadis came to chop my head off. They're returning jihadis. I love that phrase, returning jihadi. You know, jihadis are supposed to go and blow themselves up, get 72 virgins, which is more than you'll find in Beverly Hills. And, um, and then they return. So actually, a returning jihadi isn't a returning jihadi, is it? It's someone who's just a bit shit at their job. If you're a bit shit at your job, you probably want to kill yourself, but you can't because you're, yeah. Anyway, a couple of jihadis came to chop my head off as a wedding present for each other. It's not that funny, actually. <laughs> Most people make do with something from Bed Bath and Beyond. Or a Mike Lindell mattress topper. 
actually, that's one for Brandon, isn't it? If they put you back in prison, darling, we should send you in with a Mike Lindell mattress topper. <laughs> Make his life a little bit more conservative and comfortable. So these jihadis came to my home in the West Country to chop off my head. They practiced with a shop dummy and a hunting knife, and then they came to my home to do the deed. Her name, I think, was Akafahafaha. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure on the spelling. She was getting married to her fiance, and he was called, well, Akafahafaha. <laughs> Is that racist? I fucking hope so. <laughs> so. Anyway, they're now in prison serving time at Her Majesty's leisure. So boogaloo to Akapapa. <laughs> it's rough. But you know, for all the darkness in the UK and the lockdown and for all the nonsense of these rules that we know make no odds to us and make no difference, there is a difference here in the United States of America and as a respectful foreigner and as an outsider and in the knowledge that you've chased our British asses out of here once before and you could happily do so again. Uh, I'm here to tell you that you are different to us. I mean, in lots of ways. Not only do you have great teeth. <laughs> Talk about the masks. It was my finest moment as a Brit in America. I didn't have to show any bast at my teeth. Every time I go to an event, people are like, oh, Katie, Katie, I need you to come and meet Steve. Steve. Katie, this is Steve. Steve is a dentist. <laughs> Katie, 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 I need you to come and meet Peter. Katie, this is Peter. Peter is a plastic surgeon. Last time I broke into your country, I came via Barbados. I went to Barbados, I was the only white woman in the village. And these beautiful Bajan men in the fishing village shouted over, hey lady, next time you come back, bring your younger friends. <laughs> anyway, there is differences between British people and Americans, not only the teeth, not only actually great customer service, you have customer service. Right. Also, you speak to each other in elevators. That's fucking weird. <laughs> British people get in an elevator, we don't speak, we look down, we wait there quietly, pretend no one else is around, and we walk out. I remember the first time I came to America, got in an elevator, and you guys started speaking at me. <laughs> Jesus, who are these weirdos? You're like, hi, what floor would you like? How's your day going? How's things? Okay, oh my Jesus. between you and us, but the main difference between you and us is that you have freedom hardwired into your souls. You have something we don't have. If I cut you open, something in there, it, it, it's your constitution, it's your founding fathers, it's your first and second amendments, it's in you, it's hardwired into your sinews. When British people were compliantly being locked down and told to clap at the sky, in support of our socialised healthcare service, and they did, and they did. My neighbours disgust me for doing that. There is something rebellious about Americans, and when you gather in states where you are free, you are still free. Florida, Texas, all of these places, South Dakota, opening up, even here, look at you all. You are different to us in a way that really, really matters. And I so respect that about you. You know, we have been stitched up so badly. This idea that a vaccine is going to return us to normal. This sort of the complicit media. You know how complicit the media are in this. We just had a guy who's a damn cellist, right? A cellist, a, a, a celebrity cellist. He went along to have his vaccine. Have you had the vaccine? Have you? Oh, it's the best day of my life. Best day of my life. If the best day of your life was having a goddamn vaccine, you have never had good sex in your life, my friends. <laughs> That's why you have that bitter little pinched face on you. Best day of my life. So this guy, allegedly, for the media, took his cello along to have his vaccine. And when he'd had his vaccine and he came out, he was so happy because it was the best day of his life, he played a little cello concerto for the media. Oh, sure. Last time, where's the camera angle? <laughs> Just checking I don't show my whole vagina. <laughs> 
Last time I went to have a smear test, a pat test, I took my violin along and just had a little bit of a concerto myself. Isn't that what you did, ladies? Yeah. You're different to us. You have constitution hardwired into your soul. I'm not allowed a weapon. People have bumper stickers in the UK. You know, bumper stickers, the ladies. Beverly Hills women. Ooh. You know, Peloton rules. <laughs> Woo! Saw them today at the mall. Woo! Peloton. Jesus. <laughs> you have bumper stickers that say, you know, plant power for the vegans. I have a car bumper sticker that says, Dun guns don't kill people, but I'm perfectly willing to. <laughs> you are different from us. You will always have your freedom. You have your faith. Your churches have never been busier or stronger. You can't get a parking space mostly. You have your family, and I'm telling you right now that your family is sat in this room with you. It starts with Karen, and it's everybody around every table in here you can rely on as part of your family. And you have freedom hardwired into your souls. God bless all of you. God bless Donald J. Trump and God bless the United States of America. Mm -hmm.